The Lord be with you. And also with you, friends, welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church. Whenever, wherever, however you are joining us, welcome home. If you would be so kind as to let us know you are here by chiming in in the comment section. It is our stewardship season. This is our second of third stewardship Sundays. Next Sunday, we will have our stewardship dedication celebration. It will be Sunday, November 22nd at 3 p.m. in the courtyard at church. You should have received your stewardship packet and materials by now. If you haven't, go ahead and call the church tomorrow, if you would, to let us know. But in that packet, you received a ribbon. And the ribbon is for you to write the vision, what you think and feel and have discerned that God is calling our church to live into in this next season. Bring that ribbon along with your pledge card next Sunday, November 22nd, to our celebration. We'll have some snacks, we'll have some music, and we'll just get to be in fellowship together. Please wear a mask, bring your ribbon and your pledge card. If you're unable to come to that celebration, that's okay. Just bring your pledge card, either drop it by church by next Friday or put it in the mail. You can also sign up for online giving. There's instructions on the back of that estimate of giving card. At that celebration, we will also have our Advent at Home packets for families available, as well as our Advent devotional for our college students, youth, and adults. I know it seems like Advent is so far away, but it starts in two Sundays. And so you'll want to make sure that you are there. If you're unable to come and you want a devotional, again, call the office and we'll make sure to set one aside for you. We are also aware that next Thursday, not this Thursday, but next Thursday is Thanksgiving and Bullitt County Schools will be off that whole week, which means that we need to double up for our Backpack Buddies students. We always try to give them two bags worth of food when there is a holiday and they would not be in school to receive their meals. And so we are especially in need of proteins. That's canned meats that have the pop top, preferably, or cans of peanut butter. Please bring those by um, early this next week so that we can supplement and get those bags to our 40 students. We have 25 at Mill Creek Elementary and 15 at STEAM in the sixth and seventh grade. And it is such a blessing uh, and such an important ministry of ours that we are able to participate in this. So please um, add some to your list and drop them off here in the donation room. We're so grateful. We are blessed this morning by Charles Webb, who is filling the pulpit with grace. Uh, It is such a gift to have him preach, and I know that you will be blessed by his words. Brian Feltman is serving as our liturgist, Matt Garrig, Andrew Allen, Gary Guthrie as our our tech team, and then Ron Alford, our minister of music, along with organist Duke Miles and Glenn Haynes. And of course, there's you. We're so grateful that you are still sticking with us, still showing up, even now, especially now. Please join me for our call to worship. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Let us talents and tongues employ, reaching out with a shout of joy. Bread is broken, the wine is poured. Christ is spoken and seen and heard. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. Pass the word around, laws abound. Christ is able to make us one. At the table he sets the tone. Teaching people to live the bless. Love in word and in deed express. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. Pass the word around, laws abound. Jesus calls us in, sins us out. Bearing fruit in a world of doubt. 
Jesus loved to tell bread to share. God Emmanuel everywhere. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. Pass the word around, laws abound. The psalmist sings, Search me, O God, search me and know my heart. Friends, we come to our time called Prayer of Reconciliation when we express our longing for God's leading by us opening our hearts and searching them ourselves. Please join me in the Prayer of Reconciliation. Our vision is clouded, Lord. We see only what is in front of us and avert our eyes from the rest the past that haunts us, the difficult questions that loom ahead. Open our eyes to see hope and possibilities, to see redemption and restoration. When we avert our eyes from others in pain, guide us back to be of help. When we avert our eyes to injustices around us, guide us back to be a voice. When we avert our eyes from what we need to change in ourselves, guide us back to the truth. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Do you remember the story of Saul's conversion? God sent Ananias to come to Saul's aid because he had been without sight for three whole days. But I imagine it felt a lot longer, don't you? So God sent Ananias to Saul. His eyes are covered in scales, and yet Ananias is not hesitant. He comes over to Saul and places a hand gently on his shoulder. And Ananias says, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and his sight was restored. And then he got up and he was baptized. Friends, this is the good news of the Lord that pours out like waters of baptism. The hand of Christ is always there. It is gentle, and it is guiding you. It is guiding you, saying, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with love. Be filled with grace. Be filled with the knowledge that in Christ we are all forgiven. May scales fall from our eyes and might we be amazed. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pass the peace with one another, for it is too good to keep inside. Peace of Christ be with you and also with you. In this book, Mama Pena's Pancakes, Mama Pena and her son Adika get ready to head to the market. As they start on their way, Adika asks Mama Pena, will you, what will you get at the market, Mama? And she says, oh, a little bit and a little bit more. Are you making pancakes today, Mama? You are a smart one, Adika. I guess I can't surprise you. Yay, Adika, Adika says. And then he asks, how many pancakes will you make? And Mama fingered the two coins folded in the cloth tied on her waist. A little bit and a little bit more. And the story continues as they make their way onto the market. And along the way, Adika invites everyone he sees to a pancake dinner. Mama Pena worries, how will she ever feed all of these people? On the day of the pancake dinner, the guests arrived, each bearing gifts. Some brought milk and a small pail of butter. One friend brought three fish, three fish. Another friend brought plantains to go with the pancakes. 
Still other friends brought more flour and some spices. After they all enjoyed this wonderful pancake dinner, Adika looked up at his mom and he said, I know you will make pancakes again soon, Mama. And Mama Pena replied with a smile, Yes, Adika, you're one step ahead of me. In today's scripture story from Matthew, Jesus tells another story, a parable, about a boss who gives his workers lots and lots of gifts. In this story, the gifts are called talents. One of the workers chooses to not use the talents that were given to him and instead he buries them. But then he loses them. Jesus tells this story to remind us not to lose the gifts and talents that God has given us. But I think Jesus tells this story to remind us of something even more important. In the parable Jesus told, there are two workers, two other workers who did use the talents that the boss gave to them. And did you hear what happened to those two people? When they used their talents, those talents kept growing and growing and growing. In other words, when we use the talents that God gives us, they become even better gifts. And think about our um, story in, in this book today. We heard the phrase a little bit and a little bit more. Jesus teaches us how to better know about and then use the gifts that God has given us. And then when we use those gifts that God has given us, those gifts just keep on giving and giving and giving to us and to others. Mama Pena's pancakes reminds us of the importance of sharing even when we have little to give. Just remember the phrase, a little bit and a little bit more. Let's pray. This is a repeat after me for you. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who shows us how to receive the gift you offer us and how to use those gifts for ourselves and those around us. Thank you and amen. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou and Thou only, first in my heart, High King of Heaven, my treasure, Thou art. This morning's Old Testament reading comes from Habakkuk 2, verses 1 through 3a. Listen for the word of the Lord. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. Our New Testament reading comes from Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. 
His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Welcome. I'm Charles Webb, and although we're not gathered in the same building today, we are still worshiping together. At this particular time when we need so much, God can hear us and blend our distant voices into one song of worship. We're gathered today to praise Him, thank Him, to hear His holy word, and to pray for one another. Let's again thank those who've worked so diligently to implement the means by which we worship virtually. This includes our musicians and technicians, liturgists, children's summer, summer sermon leader, and of course, our pastor. As said before, there's no one in this church less worthy than I to preach a sermon. But in response to the worship committee's request and Reverend Hartman's encouragement, I'm led by the Holy Spirit to preach about something important during this season of stewardship, and that is God's investment in us. During these few minutes together, I humbly ask that you listen carefully to the message despite the shortcomings of the messenger. The 25th chapter of Matthew calls churches to join together to actively serve local communities and the greater world by caring for people who are hungry, oppressed, imprisoned, or poor. Jesus tells us to be fearless and purposeful as we work to eliminate the root causes that create an unjust world. At a time when some people feel that mainstream denominations have lost touch with the world, Accepting the Matthew 25 invitation is a way for us to join other PCUSA congregations in a common purpose to serve as true disciples. Verses 14 through 30 of Matthew 25 give us some insight into how we can do that. Of course, this scripture read earlier is known as the parables of the talents. It is told by Jesus in Jerusalem on Tuesday of Holy Week. He offers it to his disciples at the end of an exhausting day from preaching, avoiding verbal traps by his enemies, and telling parables. These verses are part of the Olivet Discourse, discourse and the last in a series of parables in which Jesus gave instructions for those who would wait for his second coming. Jesus often packaged spiritual truths and lessons for us into short, relatable stories known as parables. Although Jesus also used powerful sermons to communicate with his listeners, 
his parables hold a special place in his ministry. As noted by one of our Sunday school teachers, Joe Franklin, in his lesson last week about the ten bridesmaids, simply put, parables are earthly stories about heavenly meanings. I like this parable because, like so many others, it is simple and straightforward. At least I used to think so. In the story, a wealthy man leaves on a journey and entrusts his estate to three of his servants. The intention is they should make, take the money and earn a profit for the master while he is away. Given this time of the year, the time of annual pledge campaigns, many preachers use this parable as part of their stewardship sermons to emphasize how our generosity can be increased for God's purposes. So this is a story about investments, wise and not so wise. There is, of course, nothing wrong with the idea that we should use our talents, including our money, to glorify God. But to me, that idea alone does not fully reveal the wider panoramic view of this parable. So today, could we look at this story from a somewhat different angle? Like so many of Jesus' parables, the more we study them, the greater depth we often discover. Of course, the essential question is, what do the talents represent? There are several commentaries about what is meant. In those days, a talent was a vast sum of money. Of course, as I implied earlier, some do interpret this story as a lesson for stewardship or perhaps about investing your earnings. Blessedly, most of you already make good decisions about where and how you invest your money. Yet there is a, perhaps a more common understanding that the talents represent our human talents, given uniquely to us by God for his purposes. For example, you may say, God gave me a beautiful voice that I have worked hard to develop, so I feel called to devote that talent to singing in the choir. But other theologians believe that Jesus was talking about the spiritual talents bestowed upon all of us by the Holy Spirit, including the fruit of the Spirit. For example, love and kindness are gifts that multiply when invested in others. I understand and appreciate these interpretations of talents, but let's go further and look at talents in a somewhat different way. Could these talents also represent opportunities given to us? We can all agree that timing is pretty important in our lives. How many times have we said, thankfully I was at the right place <clears throat> at the right time? Did the right place and the right time happen by chance? Or was it you seeing an opportunity that God, perhaps through others, showed you? In a similar way, are your talents even important if not used when the opportunities arise. God has not only given us a body, mind, and soul in which to do his will, but also provides the circumstances in which our talents can do the most good. In this parable, the master gave each of the three servants a number of talents. When he departed, he also gave them the opportunity to increase their talents. Two of the servants did so, doubling their number of talents. 
But the third did nothing with his talent or with his opportunity. Instead, what did he do? He buried his talent. Then he stood by, did nothing, and let the opportunity slip by when his talent could have been multiplied. Oh, how many times have we done the same thing? God's human and spiritual gifts mean nothing if we fail to use them when they are needed most, not just when it fits our convenience. American author and educator John Shedd observed, a ship in a harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are for. The same is true for us. A Christian remaining silent is safe, but that is not what Christians are for. Having risked yourself to become a Christian, now risk yourself to be a disciple. Put your talents to use when you see the need or opportunity. Unfortunately, too many Christians think that their talents exist simply for them to be applauded by others or to make a lot of money so they can enjoy a comfortable life. Instead, God gave you talents to benefit others, not yourself. And by the way, God gave other people talents to benefit you. In Matthew 5, verse 16, Jesus teaches, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. In conclusion, the most glorious, life-changing truth is right here in the gospel. I don't think this parable is just about money, although Jesus does use great sums of it to make his point. Moreover, I don't think it is only about the talents given to us by God. I believe it is also about the times we are given to use our human talents with our spiritual talents and to do so when they are needed. It also invites us to respond to those nudges by the Holy Spirit, to call a shut-in, to help a sick friend, to feed the poor, or to join others in church missions. The lesson in this parable is clear. Be watchful and ready to respond when you are called. Discipleship is not about burying your talent in a hole. I'm reminded of a recent devotional I read in which a man saw a pitiful scene on television news of a woman clutching an infant who was starving to death. He thought to himself, God, if you are loving and compassionate, how can you allow this? Suddenly, a mental, in, a mental image of a tearful Jesus cradling the mother and child looked at him and said, You are my disciple. How can you allow this? Brothers and sisters, God calls you to earn a return on his investment in you. Amen.
Please join me in affirming our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascendeth into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, throughout our stewardship season, we will hear from different members of our congregation as they tell us about how they are writing the vision with their resources. Today, we are blessed by the witness of Matt and Lauren Rogers. Their words serve as both our invitation to the offering and as our stewardship moment. Hey, First Pres, this is Lauren and Matt Rogers coming to tell you a little bit about what we think of when we think of stewardship in our lives. So I'd like to start by sharing a verse from Matthew chapter 6. This is 19 through 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So we always think about stewardship in four different ways. Um, number one is prayers, praying for the church as a whole, praying for our church specifically, and then praying for the members of our church. Um, and I think that we do a great job of that at our church. I appreciate so much that y'all prayed for my grandma Lois over the last month or so. And I thank you for the prayers that we're receiving now after her passing. So thank you. Um, the next way that we think about it is presence. Presence in the church, just getting involved, showing up on Sundays, showing up on Wednesday nights when that's going on. Um, and we really look forward to the days when we get to be together again in person um, like normal. The third way we think about it is gifts. So gifts of money to the church um, and whatever that looks like for you. You know, we're called to give back and giving to our church is a great way to do that. We have to be able to pay the bills and, you know, pay our wonderful staff um, and our great pastor. So um, I encourage you to do that. And then the fourth way that we think about it is service. So not only can you give your money, you can also give your time and your energy. Um, that's another great way that you can give back to our church. You can volunteer with children or youth. Um, you can be a part of the missions work that's going on. You can, there's lots of different ways to get involved. So um, prayers, presents, gifts, and service are the ways that we think about stewardship. And I would just add that uh, it's always good to be joyous in this, you know, and to if, if you're happy about it and you're, you're giving of all these four things, then God's going to bless both you, the giver, and the person who's receiving. And that's just a great thing to think about as we go into this season of stewardship. So we hope that you'll take these things into consideration as you think about stewardship and what that'll look like for you and for your family over this coming year. Bye. Bye. Hi, King of Heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joy, O oh, bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O oh, ruler of all. Friends, we've come to our time in worship called the prayers of the people, the prayers of you, of friends we know and friends we don't know. You are welcome to add your own prayers to our comment section. We have many to lift up today. Lois Deal, grandmother of Lauren Rogers, passed this last week, and her service was on Friday. Matt Gehrig's relatives, Mike Gehrig and Sharon Carr, who live in Worcester, Ohio, 
have both been diagnosed with COVID-19 and have pneumonia. We also learned that Roy Nicholson, the great uncle of Yvette Allen, died on Wednesday at his home in Kingston, Jamaica. And Craig Royal, the colleague at Georgia Southern for both Anastasia Sims and Brian Feltman also passed on Wednesday. And Charlotte Wynn is undergoing treatment for cancer. We continue to pray for Virginia Yarber, who's recovering from a fall. O'Neilly O'Neilly, who's awaiting a kidney transplant. Ann Newell, who continues to receive cancer treatment, and Howard Barnard, Dodie Dunn's brother, who is receiving medical treatment too. Will you all pray with me? May it not be long, Lord. May it not be long when your children find themselves reaching across the aisles in love and listening rather than conflict and cynicism. May it not be long. May it not be long when your children invest wisely in the purposes of heaven, putting people over profit, kindness over capitalism, generosity over greed. May it not be long. May it not be long when your children find themselves quick to bless and slow to anger, pouring out laughter, multiplying joy, 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 wherever they go. May it not be long. May it not be long, Lord, when your children feast at tables of plenty and live in shelter warm rather than hunger and bodies who yearn for safety. May it not be long. May it not be long when your children turn towards one another. We pray for Mike and Sharon, for the life of Roy, the life of Craig, and the life of Lois and all those who grieve and the grief that returns when loved ones die. We pray for Charlotte and for Anne and for Howard as they continue in the long journey We pray for Virginia as she recovers and O'Neilly as he waits. We pray for all those lifted up here. May it not be long, Lord. We are called to speak and not keep silent. And so in the name of the one who is our Prince of Peace, we pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
repeat Christ's ageless call, healing, teaching, and reclaiming, serving you by loving all. Christ has no body on earth now but yours. No hands, no feet, but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion in this world, and yours are the feet which he walks to do good. And yours are the hands which blesses all he meets. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are the body. Christ has no body on earth now, but yours. So may it be so. In the name of the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, all God's beloved children say, amen.